guys, welcome to another vlog. As I mentioned, in, did I mention? I may or may not have mentioned in my last vlog that I am having a little bit of a dinner party. I'm so excited. I'm having some YouTubers over tomorrow night for apps and dinner and cocktails. Um, so Risa of Risa Does Makeup, Samantha Marsh, Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner, and Lori Hill are gonna be here. So we're all in the Vegas area. Um, and Lori and Samantha have been over to the house, but Annette and Risa have not been over. So um, they wanted to see the house. I wanted them, I wanted them to see the house. I wanted them to come over and hang out. Um, and so, I, you know, I really enjoy cooking and baking. And while, because I'm doing the carnivore diet, I won't actually be able to partake in anything other than the entree. <laughs> I do really enjoy baking and cooking. So I'm gonna be cooking up the um, whole dinner and like baking some desserts. And when I moved, I got rid of so much cookware and uh, bakeware and everything. I donated all of it, but a lot of it was just, just a little bit old. Some of it was rusted. I know you can kind of like, you know, sand that off and do all those things. Um, but I just was, I was in moving mode. <laughs> So I was like, get rid of it, donate it, donate it. Um, and now I've come to realize that I needed to get fresh stuff. So I went to Williams Sonoma, I went a little crazy. I went a little crazy and I actually ran into a subscriber there. So hi Tracy, if you're watching, it was very nice to meet you. Um, so I got some stuff for, uh, to prepare for the dinner party tomorrow. I got some stuff for the dinner party. I got some stuff for me, of course. Um, the first thing I have to share with you guys I, okay, let me start by saying this. I really don't like to get seasonal, like dinnerware, or seasonal, seasonal, what's the term? Like I don't mind seasonal decor stuff, stuff you can easily switch out or whatever, but things that are really practical that you use every day, I don't wanna have like super seasonal stuff. Anyway, I broke that rule. <laughs> I broke it because William Sonoma had this adorable, um, like pumpkin set going on. They had a whole bunch of other ones too, but this one really caught my eye. And so I ended up getting eight of the salad plates that are shaped like pumpkins. How cute are those? I'm gonna unbox them. So four come in a box. I got two boxes. And what I really wanted to get as well were these pumpkin soup bowls that had the cover. So it's like this white glaze like this, but pump. I was like, no, Michelle, calm down. The plates are enough. I feel like the plates are kind of subtle enough that I could use them all year and it won't seem inappropriate. Um, okay, let's take these out. And they're just like this perfect white beige color. Look, and they're, they're pretty big. I mean, they are salad plates. They're definitely not as big as a, a typical dinner plate, but I don't know if I'm just having like a cut of meat or something for dinner, which is happening a lot these days. I think this is a really great size. So it is made in China. It is dishwasher and microwave safe. This is what the bottom looks like. So I'm glad I got these. I was walking around that store for so long, just looking at other stuff, but really contemplating if I wanted to get pumpkin plates and I did. So I got eight of those. And then, oh, I did get one other pumpkin thing. So they also have pumpkin mugs. I do love mugs. I'll buy seasonal mugs. I have a Christmas mug. I do have Halloween mugs. This is a great fall mug. And I only get one. I don't get whole sets of mugs because I like having different ones. So here is the pumpkin mug. Again, pretty bland. You know, it's not like bright orange. So I feel like if I wanted to use this all year round, uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be obnoxious or inappropriate. And I do like the size of this. I like my mugs to be a little like wider and like rounded at the bottom. Like I like friendly looking mugs. So I got that pumpkin mug. I did end up getting another mug. And this is part of their, I call it their honey bear collection. But as you guys know, I love bears, love bears. And they had, Again, this was like a, it was kind of like the pumpkin situation. They had plates, they had a platter, they had bowls, all these things. And I really had to resist getting like everything. So I just settled for the mug and this, oh, they have a little info card here. So this is the little 
honey bear. And this is the street artist that does these honey bear paintings. So I believe he's based in San Francisco where William Sonoma is based. And I got the mug. So these are all the different honey bears with the hat, the OG honey bear, an avocado bear, and then one with a snowflake sweater. I think he's my favorite. So I picked up this mug. I love it. I love it so much. And then I think the rest of this is for preparation for um, tomorrow's dinner party. So I had no more like baking sheets or cookie sheets. So I ended up getting two of these William Sonoma Gold Touch um, cookie sheets. They are really big and I like that this, uh, like where you grab it, is along the width of the cookie sheet versus the shorter end because a lot of times I put it in this way. Like very rarely am I cooking so, baking so much that I'm putting them side by side. I don't even think they would fit in my oven side by side. So this is just so much more practical to me. So I got two of these and I love their Gold Touch Pro line. I have um, a muffin tin. I think it's a muffin tin. It's either a muffin top tin or a muffin tin in this Gold Touch Pro. It's really nice, really very, very nice. And then I got two racks because I did not have any, any racks. So I ended up getting the Gold Touch Pro racks. I have two, yeah, I got two of those. And then I got two of the Silpat half cookie silicone mats um, to put on top. These are the absolute best. If you are into baking, you probably have these, but these are awesome. So I got two of those. And then I realized I didn't have any actual pot holders. I had the oven mitts. I had two of those. I Sometimes I just throw those down and put like a hot pan on top of it. I was like, okay, I need some pot holders. And actually having my girlfriends over last week, um, you know, I had one of my friends is really into cooking. Anyway, she was like, where are your pot holders? I was like, I don't have them. Just use a kitchen towel. She was like, oh my God. So anyway, I got two of these in the gray, solid gray color, but they had a whole bunch of different like patterns, like stripes, ticking stripes. They have like red, blue. Do they have yellow? Maybe yellow and green. Anyway, I got the plain gray. What's new? Um, and then they only had one of these. I was bummed. I wanted to get more, but these are like, what did they call them? A mini mitt. So it is like an oven mitt, but it's like short. And I love it because as much as I love my oven mitts, they're just gigantic sometimes. And I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I don't need the whole thing sometimes. So I thought this was really awesome. And I love the gray stripes here. So I picked those up. And then the very last thing I got, this I got just right when I was checking out. I, they just caught my eye and I was like, I really, really like these. So we have a ton of tongs. We have those OXO tongs with the black plastic tips and they're great. They're great for like nonstick pans or whatever. But I loved these because they're like olive wood at the ends instead of black plastic. So this is safe for nonstick and it's just a little bit more special and we can always use tongs. I'm so in love with these. So those are the olive wood 12 inch tongue. There's the name right there. So that is my little William Sonoma haul. <laughs> I definitely don't do this often, but man, that is a lot of fun. I mean, you can really, really get sucked in. I was starting to look at crystal. I was like, ooh, look at these crystal like highballs. I don't even drink. So that is what I got at Williams Sonoma. Hello. Well, I just got back from grocery shopping. I did all the shopping I needed to do for the dinner party. Uh, I'm all set. I am exhausted. <laughs> I don't think I'm used to so much activity between going to Williams Sonoma and I stopped by my mom's and then I did all this grocery shopping and then we had to stop by the hardware store. Like I've been running around today and it seems like a normal amount of errands, but I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I haven't done that in so long. Anyway, I want to get um, ahead and do a little bit of the cooking today so that I'm not completely overwhelmed tomorrow. I'm tired, I'm really tired. I could make, oh, let me share with you the menu. 
Okay, so the menu, I'm just going to be setting out like um, a little charcuterie board. Um, I did forget to get like fruit and some dried fruits and stuff for that. So I'll probably have to, or maybe my husband will help me and go out tomorrow morning and grab that for me. And then um, I did get alcohol for the ladies because I don't drink. Um, and I do have alcohol at home, but not a lot. I don't have mixers or anything like that. Anyway, um, so I picked up some of that. And then for appetizers, I'm gonna have a tomato soup and then I'm gonna make some gougere. And you know, like they always say pear tomato soup with like grilled cheese sandwich or whatever. But since this is just an appetizer, I thought the cheese puffs, the gougeres would be better. We decided on chicken. I told them to tell me if they didn't like food, allergic, whatever. So we decided on chicken. So I did get some chicken breast and then I did get some legs too. So if they want, you know, white meat, dark meat, they have a little bit of an option. Um, so I had that already. And then for size, I'm gonna do Hari Kover and then um, mashed potatoes. So I got the green beans, I got the potatoes, I got dill for the Hari Kover. That's the recipe I'm using. And then for dessert, I am air frying donuts. And then I got some chocolate um, ice cream to put on top. You guys saw that I tried baking some apple cider donuts. My husband loved them. Um, I gave some to my mom. She said she liked them. Um, but they're like cake. Like it's almost like an apple muffin. So I was like, okay, let me see if I can figure out how to do like a yeast rice donut without like the, the deep frying. Cause that just, it's such a commitment. So much oil, it's such a mess. And I found this air fryer donut recipe. I actually found it on YouTube. And then the woman who posted it, I'll link it down below. The woman who posted it um, also has like a blog post on it, you know, with all the information or whatever. So I used that for my shopping list and that was really handy. Um, so I'm gonna be trying that. Um, but when we moved, I donated my air fryer because I was like, you know, it's really old. I'm like, if I'm gonna continue air frying stuff, which I, I did like using it, um, I wanted like a newer kind of nicer one because the one that I have, it just had these like knobs. It was fine. It just had these knobs, but I thought, you know what? I think it's time to upgrade. I wanna get one with like a digital reading. You can like really like set the temperature. Um, and so I donated that one uh, when we moved. And so I thought it was a good opportunity to purchase an air fryer. I mean, no better reason, right, to make donuts. So this is the one that I got. It's actually the one that the woman with the air fryer donut recipe recommended. And this is highly rated on Amazon as well. I wasn't sure what size to get. So they have three sizes, like a large, an extra large, and like an extra, extra large. So I got the, I think I got the extra large. I just got the one in the middle. I'm pretty sure I got the extra large, um, but I'm excited to bust this open. So let's open up this guy. It's heavier than I thought. Definitely heavier than my old one. My old one was really, because I wasn't sure if I was going to air fry. It was one of those like air fryers had just come out and I was like, oh, I don't know. Is this gimmicky? Is this one of those things that's gonna like just die away quickly? It didn't, I used it quite a bit. Anyway, long story short, I ended up getting like a really cheapy one. So I'm excited to upgrade, it's very exciting. Well, here it is. Oh, oh it's taped shut. <laughs> anyway, enough fussing with the new air fryer. Um, I guess I'll leave this on the counter since I'm gonna be using it tomorrow. But at the moment, I wanna get all of this Williams Sonoma, like the pumpkin plates and the two mugs that I got. I wanna get them into the um, dishwasher and washed up before I use them for the first time. using my new honey bear mug. 
love him so much. Today's the day of the dinner party, so I've got to get cooking. It's it's about six in the morning, so I am I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I do need to film and edit something for tomorrow. Last minute. Um, hopefully, I can get it all done. But I figure, why don't I start cooking a little bit, and then I'll film and edit, and then I'll come back to cooking. That way, I break it up a little bit, um, and then I also have to clean up this house a bit. It, it one good thing about not having that much furniture is there's really not much to tidy up. <laughs> But I do have a bunch of boxes laying around. Um, I like cleaned and dried the bed sheets on my guest bed since my girlfriends were here um, last week, uh, but they've been sitting in the dryer. <laughs> so I've got to put that on the bed. Yeah, just, just do stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to start with what I can kind of like pre-cook. So I can definitely pre-cook the tomato soup that I wanted to serve as an appetizer because it's just tomato soup. So I can cook that, refrigerate it, and then just warm that up when they get here. And then I may start the donuts because you have to let the dough rise. It is a yeast uh, recipe. Um, but I don't think I have to let them rise for too long. So I'm like, do I want to do that now? Because it's also a good thing to do while I'm cooking other things. So I may just do the tomato soup now. Anyway, let's go ahead and start that. Oof, I may have to use my cryo tools. So I've got my iPad here. I'm going to pull up the recipe that I'm planning on using. So this is tomato soup. Here's a picture of it. This is the recipe I'm using. It's off of um, the New York Times cooking app and it's just called tomato soup. It is a recipe from Ted's Bulletin adapted by Jennifer Steinhauer. Um, if I can remember, I'll link everything down below. All right. Let's do this. I didn't think it'd be this hard To go and try to let you down At first for sure we saw forever and the distance But the path of least resistance This is what happens when you don't want to cry cutting onions. Okay, little tip. Be fine on your own. I got you singing. Ooh, I got the blues. I got you singing. Ooh, I don't know what to do without you, baby. Ooh, the blues and even though your heart is breaking i got another man who loves to make me smile all right so the tomato soup is simmering it has to simmer for 30 minutes and then i'm going to use an immersion blender and just blend it all up and then i'm just gonna i think leave it on the stove for a while and if it cools down to room temperature then i'll um, stick it in the fridge but that's pretty much done the longest part is the simmering part <laughs> the 30 minutes of simmering um and I have to kind of stand by because I want to, you know, you're supposed to stir it and scrape the bottom like frequently. So um, yeah, I just kind of took the opportunity to like clean up all the dishes that I dirtied while I did this. You guys saw the first Dutch oven I picked was not big enough. I think that one was four quarts. And then I had to move it over to this one, which is like maybe six quarts. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking because I knew the recipe took four of those 28 ounces of diced tomatoes. This is a lot of tomato soup. What I did want to mention was I hauled this, oh, I didn't dry it. I hauled this yesterday, this William Sonoma olive wood tong. I just got it because I just, you know, I thought it was so beautiful and it's a nice change to um, the black plastic tip ones that I have. And I thought, oh, it's just a nice alternative because you can use this you know, on like nonstick pans, it's not metal, it's not gonna scrape it up, but you can't um, put it in the dishwasher, you have to hand wash it. And uh, my husband was using it to kind of grip uh, some chicken yesterday, and he said it's pretty good, but, oh, hold on. Oh my God, they're all in the dishwasher right now. So the OXO um, tongs that we use with the black plastic tips, they have like little, like slight ridges along the side and he said that really helps with like gripping stuff so he was like these are nice but they're not quite as taut so he's like i could see this this would be great for like salads or just sort of like tossing stuff or whatever but not really great for like holding while cutting and, and stuff like that so i just wanted to give you a follow-up on these olive wood tongs since we already use them a three-quarter cup of half and half and then two tablespoons of honey. I don't bother with and move. Okay. 
Hello, I just finished filming and editing. It was like record, record time. I wish I could work that efficiently all the time. Anyway, I'm back in the kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and start the donuts because yeah, I mean, if those cool, I can always just put them in a Tupperware for now and heat them up uh, right before we eat them. So let's get to donut making. I have to get the yeast first. I have to dissolve that in some water and some sugar. So let's do that first. Okay, about two cups and three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And again, I'll leave a link to the recipe that I'm using. This is not my recipe, not by any means. Two, three. Three tablespoons of sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I am just going to I this because I'm just going to grind the net leg oops right in there one egg oh my camera stopped filming sorry I uh, was just putting in some melted butter and then I'm gonna add in the yeast, and I'm just gonna lightly combine all of this. And I'm gonna knead this dough on my stand mixer. So I'm putting the dough hook. It says to knead for three minutes. So while that's kneading, I'm going to grease a bowl. This is where I'm gonna put the, the kneaded dough in two to let it rise. So I'm just going to take this stick of butter the dough seems a little wet so I'm actually going to add a little bit more flour Add like a tablespoon more flour. Okay, so there's my dough. Scrape this out, stick it in this bowl. It's still pretty sticky, but it's behaving itself okay. Some saran wrap. And now I'm gonna let the dough rise for two hours. All right, so we've got two hours for the donuts to rise. Uh, let's check on the tomato soup. It's still really warm, so I'm just gonna leave it covered here. I don't wanna put it in the fridge unless it gets to room temperature, but it still feels really warm. So I'm just gonna leave it here. And I don't think there's much else in terms of cooking that I can do at the moment. So I think what I'm gonna do is clean up the place. It really needs a good clean. So. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make the bed upstairs and just pick up some stuff. I have some like clothing drying on the railing. It's, it looks terrible, but it's the only place we have right now. So I'm uh, gonna pick that up and yeah, and just tidy up a little bit. Okay, I just picked up around the house. There's still more to be done, but I came down to check on the donut dough. There is a little bit less than an hour left. And look at how much fluffier it's gotten. <gasps> I love working with yeast, it's so magical. Okay, so I'm doing what I can um, before I have to start working on the donuts. So I just laid out the charcuterie board. I didn't have any um, like more dry fruits than just these dried cranberries. I wish I had some dried apricots and maybe some fresh fruit, um, but plenty of cheese. Put out some prosciutto, some little cornichons or baby gherkins. And yeah, I've got some blue cheese, some brie, and then some other kind of basic cheeses. And then these are candied almonds. And then I put out some peanut brittle too, for those who have a little bit of a sweet tooth. So that is the charcuterie board. I'm going to wrap this up and put it back in the fridge. 
All right, now it's time for me to roll out the donuts. that I'm gonna be using the air fryer, my new air fryer for the first time. I'm gonna plug it in and I've gotta grease, grease this basket they say. So I'm gonna lift this out and then just spray something just so the donuts don't stick. I'm just starting with two, let's see what happens. And now minutes, so I'm gonna say three minutes and then push the button. Okay, they actually look like Bialis. <laughs> they smell good. All right, let me put the rest in. All right, so here are the donuts. I have a few like raw ones left, but I don't even know if I'm gonna make them because I think these, maybe these four look the best for my four guests. I'm gonna have my husband try this one. I just wanna know what this tastes like because it really, doesn't this look like a Bialy? So strange. So my husband was a little confused. He's like, what am I eating? Is this a Bialy? <laughs> I was like, it looks like a Bialy, right? And then he's like, are they supposed to be sweet? And I'm like, not really, because I didn't put the glaze on them yet. Anyway, I told him, I was just looking for feedback on like texture. He's like, it just kind of tastes like bread. So, okay. I don't know if there's any real decent substitute to like fried donut. I mean, is there really a substitute to frying something? Not really. But he said, he's like, in his opinion, he prefers the baked ones that I made, those apple cider baked donuts, because he's like, they're cakier, they seem more like a dessert. He's like, where these seem kind of like bread. He's like, if you didn't glaze these, he's like, I would eat these with like eggs in the morning. So anyway, with glaze, they're gonna be really sweet. Um, but at least the donuts are done and they came out pretty cute. I do like the shape of them and I feel like now that they've been sitting out here, I feel like they're puffing up even more. All right, so it's about 3.30 right now. I have about an hour and a half before they get here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is wait until four o'clock and then it's gonna be that mad rush where you're cooking a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time. I am probably not gonna be able to talk through a lot of it, but I'll, I'll leave the camera on so you can see me kind of running around like, like a crazy person. had to share with you guys the Gougere. Can you see like the shiny smoothness of the batter? Yes, these are gonna be good. I haven't made these in a while and now I can't remember if how far they should be apart. I think they grow just a little bit, not too much. These may, these may end up touching, but I think these should be good. <laughs> we'll see. All right, the cheese puffs, the Gougere, have come out of the oven. <gasps> they look amazing, amazing. I hope they taste good. <laughs> I hope I didn't forget an ingredient. Uh, I'm gonna have to have my husband try one of these. Ooh, love these. Such an easy recipe. Everyone's here. The ladies are here. Hi. Hi Samantha. Samantha, way Hi. down there, being busy. Busy being single. Hi. What? <laughs> Posting to Instagram. Influencers at work. In the always, always working. So this is what we ended up for hours. 
little charcuterie board, mm -hmm. some dip, some crackers, mm -hmm. and I whipped out my DL & Co. skull plates for the occasion. We are outside because yeah, we're trying to figure out how to do it. a picture of oh, yeah. all of us. Oh yeah, this is better. Oh, yeah, this is better. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Wait. That's the only problem is like, that's that round. How many influencers oh, does it take to... Yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah, Sam. Yes. Get it. Look. They're all outside chatting. Oh, this makes me so happy. I love having friends over. Well, I think... I think we're ready to serve stuff. So my camera completely shut off while I was cooking and I was in the middle of cooking, so I apologize, but let me show you where we're at. So here are the cheese puffs. Here are the glazed donuts. Those actually look really good to me. The tomato soup is reheating. I've got the haricot vert in there. And, oh, <laughs> most important. The chicken breast with the dry brine. I gotta say, that looks pretty good. And here are the mashed potatoes. So I think we're good. We are ready to eat. You said it at the start, still I find it surprising. I talk of faith, my faith's in It was a success. <laughs> Most of the food is gone. The ladies have left. And we all had such a good time. Well, I definitely had a good time. They said they had a good time. I don't know if they were just being nice, but I've got a lot to clean up. So I'm gonna go and do that, and I will see you guys in my next vlog. Bye!